Now that we have seen a lot on the machine side, in combination with the tools and the control, let's take a look at clamping devices. We got mechanical clamping devices, we got pneumatic, and we also have the vacuum table. The vacuum table is actually perfect for whole plate materials, even larger plates. But what is the secret behind it? Actually, we have a vacuum pump somewhere beside the machine. So a hose goes into the machine and distributes the vacuum through the table. So we have, in this case, on an ML cube, six connections that go through the polymer concrete table. So the vacuum would float into this vacuum fixture, vacuum plate. It's like a sandwich plate, so it's like internal distribution. And then we have these 100 by 100 millimeter fields, the uh, meander slots. So it's like a, uh, a pattern, like a slot that goes from here to there. And we have this little rubber plug in the middle. So with a little key, we can basically activate or deactivate um, those fields because they have like an eccentric hole. So they would, even, would either let the vacuum through or seal this section. So what I'm doing is I'm taking my piece of material, check the size. So I would approximately make the, open the same size as my material is. This would be like roughly 200 by 200. So I've opened four of these plugs. Now before I put the, the plate on the table, the vacuum card goes in between. The vacuum card is a sacrificial layer which has a thickness of 0.7 millimeters and that goes in between the table and the part. It means that we can cut through the material into this paper without harming the vacuum plate and we don't lose a lot of vacuum when we cut through. Because imagine if you have like a lot of pockets, you open up a part um, on a standard fixture with a gasket, you would just lose a lot of vacuum. I activate my pump now. And this part is now rock solid on the table. I take my single fluid end mill now and we just take like a little, or cut a little disc out of this. We see if it holds on the table. Um, and then I'm gonna explain a little bit more about this technology. All right, now that we have cut through this part, let's just see how it holds on the table. So I'm not able to move this from the table, but I can feel with my, the palm of my hand the, the effect of the vacuum. If I switch the pump off now, I can just easily take this off. So we can see we have a, a sharp edge with no burr on the part. And if we take a close look at the vacuum card, we can see that we have basically the shape, the contour that we milled through in the paper now. We usually go about 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters deeper into the, into the vacuum card that um, just, makes, just to make sure that the part is completely cut out and that we get a nice and sharp edge. And because of the remaining cardboard here, the vacuum um, power and the force itself holds on um, or stays still um, quite high. So vacuum is actually the perfect uh, work holding solution when it comes to plate materials. You can also batch parts, just put a, a large piece of uh, material on the table and just cut multiple parts out um, just by pressing, uh, pressing the start button once. All right, besides the vacuum clamping technology, we also have mechanical elements um, in order to hold our parts. We got the pneumatic one, which we're gonna, uh, gonna take a look um, later on. I first wanna mention the, uh, the centric vise. It's basically a standard vise with, a, um, with soft jaws in this case. So aluminum soft jaws um, can be 
you can you can mill any contour any shape of your part that you need or if you just need basically a parallel step for any part also possible to get um, the vise in a longer version and with wider soft jaws so these aluminum soft jaws can be just mounted on the on the vise itself let's talk about the pneumatic clamps the short stroke elements um, I mentioned it um, at the beginning of this video we have a T-slot plate a fixed jaw in the back and we got those short, short stroke elements they have a vertical cylinder which is uh, located here in the center and a horizontal one um, for the short stroke if I press this bolt down here I can drag it out and you see there is this little T-stone and if I release it the T-stone will be basically um, pulled upwards so if I move this into a T-slot stone into it and release it it's, um, it's fixed on the plate so whenever I want to hold a part and clamp a part I take this part I got a little step here with a, with a ducktail cut in it I move my part, uh, my, my short stroke element, the flexible element, to the edge of the part. So I can just move it in the x direction in this case. And all I got to do now is pushing the upper bolt, which gives the clamping force in the horizontal direction towards the fixed jaw. And now this part is locked. These elements are pretty flexible. Um, you can combine multiple elements, also multiple T-slot plates in different lengths. Um, and you, like round parts can be, can be held, you can orient uh, them in different orientations. So let's just say you have a big round part uh, where you want to clamp over, over like three points. That would be possible or you can use those as soft jaws. We saw this M8 cube with the cutout table right at the beginning and we have the vertical clamping device mounted vertically on it. What can I do with it is I can use it for applying like threads or breakouts in very like high parts. It's not possible to mount this on a table like this because the clearance of the gantry would just not allow it. So I can simply place it down to this um, vertical end stop that's adjustable put it basically to the side or any other mechanical stop I can move those elements those are pneumatic elements just similar to the ones that we saw at the with the short stroke elements then I move this this bar over so it has different lock positions and then I just release this short stroke so I give pressure on the on the part against the T-slot plate and now my part is prob properly held and I can easily make those threads or cut out in the table of course the, the the force the clamping force is not as high as like on a on a vise or on a like really tight uh, mechanical device but mostly for just making breakouts into like housings or plates or covers it's absolutely sufficient and an extremely flexible solution as you can do stops or clamps um, just as you need them they could be mechanical with like T, T stones or um, just simply uh, using uh, screws to mount parts another great option when it comes to avoid dust or chips in the machining area is the clean cut system. It's highly recommended to use it when it comes to abrasive materials like carbon fiber or glass fiber where you have this like aggressive dust which can harm the, um, the mechanics of the machine like the ball screw or even affect the lung of the operator because this very fine dust goes into your lung when you breathe in. That's why we have the clean cut it's basically mounted on the z-axis and it has this head which moves a little bit downwards and under the spindle and under the tool and the pipe and the hose goes 
from the tool all the way out to the machine into an industrial vacuumer. So the chips or the dust will be collected outside in a tray or whatever system. I will now just move the head down and just explain a little bit more how it works. Close the door. So when we now take a look at the system, it's a static system, so I will, before I start my work, I check the thickness of my plate and I can, I can move this up and down with this knob on the side here with a yellow, with a yellow cap. So I can adjust the height a little bit. So whenever it comes to plate materials and like plastic or um, abrasive material cutting, this is an extremely helpful um, software. The deeper you go, the less suction power the system has because there is just, um, the, the, the airflow is getting less or the, the power which pulls on the, on the chip is getting less the deeper you go. So if you have like big pockets of let's say 20 millimeters, the efficiency will go down. But if you have thin materials, absolutely uh, an, a great add-on for the machines. And let's take a look how it works when we cut the pocket into this plate. The Datron Axis 4 is the perfect add-on for any of the machines from Datron Neo up to the MX Cube to make a 4-axis machine out of this 3-axis gantry system. It comes with optionally different clamping systems. We have a 3-jaw vise for round stock material now in the machine with a tail stock. You can also use a centric clamp just to get like straight parts, like plate material in. The machine can both perform simultaneous movements as well as indexing. So simultaneous is what we currently see. All axes are interpolating at the same time, um, inclusive the, um, the A axis, the rotation axis. Indexing would just be going into one angle, then making a feature in three axes, repositioning with the um, rotation axis. I just stopped this program quickly so we can get a closer look. It can be taken off from the machine in case you don't need it. So it's just like any other clamping system. It's just bolted down on the table. And as you can see in this setup, we even have half the table with vacuum equipped. So that is actually a perfect um, solution to yeah, expand the uh, capabilities of the machine. And um, on a lot of parts, even where you would think that it is, it is a three axis part and you just have to clamp it a couple of times in a vise, um, should be worth to consider to do it on the fourth where you can just do multiple angles, multiple sides at a time, top and bottom, and then just facing off the rest material. Definitely a great add-on for all the machines.